So uh, I'm sitting here with a very special person that we've met in Antwerp, Astrid uh, Luce over here. And uh, Astrid has been uh, basically giving us the most amazing time here in Antwerp. She hosted us for two nights, uh, let us crash on her couch, uh, and she's also a social worker here. So Astrid, uh, thanks for everything that you've done for us and um, to talking to us on, uh, on camera. And I wanted to ask you a few things. As a social worker, um, could you just explain what it is that you do? Uh, here in Antwerp. Okay, so it's uh, called street corner work. Um, we basically most of the time spend on the streets or in public places like bars, um, community centers, and trying to get in touch with the most vulnerable people um, and see what we can do for them. Um, mostly we try to just be there, like having a talk. Yep, okay, so you've been doing this work for about 12 years? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh, so you don't work specifically with homeless uh, people, but you work a lot with foreign immigrants coming into uh, Antwerp. And how would you describe their situation in Antwerp? Um, is people coming in without papers, without documentation? Mm -hmm. uh, is it a difficult, well obviously there are difficulties, but uh, how would you describe their situation? Well, here in Antwerp the biggest group of immigrants are Moroccan people. But um, I think like right, last 10 years we had a lot of people from former Yugoslavia. And they often come here without uh, without documents, trying to find a new life because not all of them are um, war fugitives. Um, yeah, it's hard also as a social worker because you can um, advise them to find a lawyer. We have this free lawyer system if you don't have any income. Um, but on the other hand, if they don't have any legal papers, you just can send the kids to school and um, bringing them to the food supplies. We have in, in a few neighborhoods some food supply organizations, charity mostly, um, from the church. Yeah. So that's obviously another major issue is um, not just homeless, but people being socially excluded because of uh, where they're coming from, their backgrounds, their circumstances. Um, now, Astrid, in terms of uh, homelessness in Antwerp, is it a major problem? Um, yeah, I, I think so. Um, like in Antwerp, we uh, there is one shelter for homeless people, and it's usually full. There's also a problem that people with uh, dogs can go there. And in the winter, we had a, a special program with more places, and there was, a, for example, a separate um, shelter for Polish people. We have a huge uh, group of Polish people um, sleeping on the street. And for the rest, I think it's a it's a big mixture of all kinds of nationalities. Yeah, yeah. And they mostly hanging around in uh, certain neighborhoods around the train station. Yeah, yeah. But that, yeah. And well, what if, uh, if someone's sleeping on the street in Antwerp, what's the official reaction? Like, say, if a policeman comes across someone sleeping on the street, uh, what are they likely to do? Well, for the moment, you have this. Um, uh, policy in Antwerp that they want to clean up some neighborhoods. Um, so now when police find someone sleeping on the streets, I think they will send them to the, to the shelter. Uh, but before, I think they don't really okay. care about it. No. So they're trying to clean up the city center? Yes. To sort of make it more appealing yeah. to tourists? Yeah, and also um, at the Koning Plan, it's a place where mostly um, homeless people and also drug addicts were hanging around and they put a, a new uh, city library there and some people say they are scared to go there so that's why uh, they try to clean it. So now you, you can't drink alcohol anymore on the square and it's the same on the square in front of the train station. And that's how they hope that people go away but of course these people go somewhere else. Yeah, so gonna, you're not solving the issue, you're just moving it somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, and on drug addiction, I mean, a lot of people, uh, they associate homelessness with drug addiction, mm -hmm. thinking that that's the main cause. And I have had people tell me it is the main cause, but I've had people tell me it's not. What's your view on that? Well, I, I don't think it's the... I think a lot, a lot of drug addicts are homeless, but not all the homeless are drug addicts, or not a lot. Um, because uh, getting a house or getting a roof is more and more an issue here in Antwerp and I guess in Belgium. Uh, because the uh, renting rates or prices, you know, you say they are um, unlimited. Um, so if you have like five people who want to rent out your place, you choose the one with the best. Oh really? Um, 
So there's no cap on the rental price. They yeah, so rather. which makes it different if you don't have a job. Um, they start asking you for um, your papers from your job, like to see if you have a contract and yeah. things like that. So um, a big group of people are, um, yeah, just getting homeless because yeah. well, they can't pay or they can't afford um, a house anymore. Yeah. And you have social housing in Antwerp, in Belgium. But there's a waiting list of uh, approximately six years. Really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So the economical situation can't be helping that either with what's going on, people losing their jobs. Yeah. That mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, is there anything that the government is doing or can do to make people like you, to make your job easier? Is this a question you're willing to answer? <laughs> I'll yeah, blow your face they, out. They, so. they could uh, support us to yeah. start and what they actually are not doing. Um, it's a part of this new uh, repressive policy and we're working um, on demand of the people we are working with and the city government wants to turn it around. Yeah. Um, we also have uh, another important thing I didn't tell you yet, but we have uh, professional secrecy. So um, if I talk with you on the street for one hour, I'm not allowed to tell anybody else what we have been discussing. Yeah. But of course, if you are um, trying to get some social security, the other social worker will try to call me to get information from you and yeah. we say no. And of course the city government wants us to tell what we know, but we just tell general things yeah. like, for example, we see a lot of homeless Spanish people on the street because a bad economical situation in Spain, yeah. you have probably read something about the protests now. Yeah. So these people coming up here because you can move freely with a European passport yeah. and go wherever you want. Um, so we report that, but I don't say I know uh, Juan or I know Carlos and he's, yeah. uh, he don't have money or he, he goes stealing. I can't say that, but of course the city government wants us to tell. So they could help us by just leaving us doing our thing and leave it street corner. Yeah. Yeah. So you are obliged, well, you believe in confidentiality when you talk to individuals, mm -hmm. but the government wants you to actually... Yeah, and we, we're going to have problems on the street if, we, if we're not trustworthy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or people not gonna tell, or we yeah we're just gonna get in trouble. So guys, people are working directly with uh, individuals in need uh, to face these issues. Obviously, um, when it comes to government policies and that kind of thing. Uh, so that's been really enlightening. Astrid, is there anything else you would like to tell people out there? Yeah, um, because uh, some more answer on the last question. What was my um, last question? what the government could do. Okay, yeah. We also try to, to get some um, users' rooms, I yeah. don't know how yeah. to say in English. Uh, for drug addicts. Yeah. yeah. Um, well then get clean needles yeah, safe. Because, yeah, we already give, we have this um, needle exchange program. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like for the shelter, they kick them out at 8 and then they're the whole day on the street. Some yeah. people are using on the street. And I would say, like, if the government likes to follow Dutch policy, like Rotterdam is the big example, yeah. let's do the same what the Dutch people do and giving these people places where they can go during the day. And yeah, for sure. And like, say, a bus that picks people up at night and takes them to a shelter. That kind of well, that's what was going on in the winter. And now we're also asking to what they did in the winter to continue with the whole year. Yeah. Uh, I just have one more question, just because of what we learned in the Netherlands uh, was to do with... Um, to get good assistance as a homeless person, you had to uh, be registered, you had to have your papers. Do you have that yeah. issue here in Belgium as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they, they have some extra places for people without papers or without being registered, but they're always full. Yeah. Okay. Astrid, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your amazing hospitality. <laughs> Mason welcome. and I feel so privileged and honored uh -huh. to have met you and stayed with you. And we think you're doing amazing work. And we hope that you get all the support you can get.